Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we begin by trying to fulfill the successful re-entry contract. Uh, we weren't able to do it before because it's specified uncrewed and uh, so yeah we couldn't do it with the crew capsules we were bringing back down. I had actually picked it up with the intention of doing it with those crew capsules but hey uh, successful re-entry with an uncrewed module or craft is not that big a deal and so what we have is a small probe in here containing a film return camera two crew co containers and we may get some science we may not uh, but we'll try and do it quickly I decide to make the Larry rocket named after the LR89 I'm taking the LR and turning into Larry just like I did NK Nico and uh, we've got an Agena stage up here and I just wanted to get it done so that we can move on to the main event which is all of our interplanetary probes. Hopefully we can finally see them reach their destination but I wanted to knock this contract out of the way first. So on that note let's take it outside, let's build it and then now uh, we'll get it on its way. Alright so here we are. We are using a lunar rated heat shield because there's actually no point not to um, and I've reduced the ablator a tiny bit and yep everything seems to be alright the payload's about 0.7 tons and so the rocket should be able to handle it just fine I'll put fins on just in case uh, because it's the first time and so SAS on throttle is up and we just need to go up and bring it back down again so ignition and launch I would have been tempted to use the H1 instead, but the H1 costs a lot more. The LR89 costs about 700, the H1 costs 1750, which means that the H1 is uh, more than twice the cost of an NK15. Actually, maybe more than three times the cost, I'll have to check. And it has about half the thrust, or uh, a little more than half the thrust. I decided to use American engines this time though because we don't get to use them very often and yeah I mean it's just sad really. It's all Soviet all the time otherwise except for the J2. We seem to have a roll oscillation because of the fins. Yeah, this is through max Q right now. It'll probably stabilize after we get through this part. Okay, end of the first stage here, everything looking okay. And separation. And ignition. Okay, Agena ignition. And fairing set. I forgot to tune down the little separatrons so they last for three seconds instead of one. They went too fast. Okay, no apparent problems. We've got the Sputnik antennae on here because they last, you know. I like to maintain communication. Uh, I actually think I forgot to customize the parachute, so let's do that. Uh, no, I want it on pressure, just a higher pressure. For some reason, this particular variant of the Agena didn't have a time limit. It didn't have a burn time limit. Uh, I went with five minutes. The earlier version seemed to have four. I felt it was fair. We'll try and have the Agena stage deorbit itself. Well, heck, the Agena stage can deorbit the whole thing, come to think of it. I was going to use the little RCS thrusters on this to do so, but to deorbit the probe, but no reason not to just flip it around with the Agena stage and use that. Looks like we need some more tilt. Problem here is that we've ended up too low somehow. We should have had the first stage go steeper. Technically this engine could shut down and restart at apoapsis. So I could tilt up a whole lot and then uh, bring our apoapsis higher. I wonder what the requirements for the re-entry are. 
I mean, it's, it's already checkmarked reach orbital velocity, which is weird because we're nowhere close to it. They might need to rewrite that whole thing. Well, we've got three ignitions. We can try and do it legitimately. And so we'll maybe close to apoapsis. Okay, let's see. Well, it doesn't say it needs to be settled. And shut down. 254 by 160 seems fine. Okay, let's do some science. Open doors for the heck of it. Take photographs of the ocean. Well, you're supposed to be a spy satellite? No. Ah, uh, well, hold on. Maybe, maybe we should find some better place to spy, because apparently we've done over water before. I don't know what kind of kink there is in that line, but all right. Okay, have we done spy things over here? No, we haven't. We can recover 15 signs. Keep experiment. How about, well, goo is probably, can we get the goo? Hmm. There we go. I think there's only one for near Earth anyway. We'll try and get one in the atmosphere. Maybe there's some difference or flying over or something. We'll see. Where should we land? We should have gone into a polar orbit. We probably haven't done that sort of thing before. I guess maybe we'll land over here and see what happens, or at least try to. Ignition? Well, that'll definitely bring us down. And more importantly, dispose of the Agena stage. Separation. And let's verify that, uh, well, I mean, yeah, yeah, I just arm it. Hmm, the RCS on here doesn't seem to be configured properly. I put the fuel in here. Um, it looks like it's still configured to hydrazine, even though I thought I had it on the right fuel. But uh, no matter, it should orient properly in the atmosphere. And we don't have a reaction wheel, so we'll just let it be. Yep, it's all on its own now. So much for carrying the fuel and everything. Oh, it's drifting a bit. Well, we'll see. Maybe we can't bring a capsule back down safely yet. Maybe we haven't gotten to that part in our space program. Can, can it reorient properly? Maybe not. It's pointed in a horrible direction right now. No, don't do that. No. Please flip around. I didn't expect to not have RCS configured properly. I mean, I've seen miraculous probe survival before. But that parachute's already overheating, so... Yep. Is anything except for the parachute going to explode? Yeah, I had an extra controller there. It seems like it's heating up now. Okay, looks like we were overly hasty with our launch. Let's try that quickly again. We have to get through that contract. I'm not going to fail a contract like that. Alright, a number of fixes have been implemented, including the RCS thrusters, the separatrons have been limited in their thrust, so they have longer duration, and uh, hopefully everything will work this time. Let's do it quickly. Ignition. And launch. Thankfully, these rockets don't take too long to build. At least there appears to be the possibility of science to be done. 
Okay, that should be a good apoapsis step. And ignition. Okay. Fairing separation. And everything's looking good. Actually, I, I forgot I should have probably launched this into polar orbit like I had suggested before, but then again, we still got science from it. So, launching it this way is not a bad idea either. But, could get some polar orbit science if we were pressed for science. Um, technology wise, though, we're unlocking things still, so. It's not like we're uh, tight on science, and of course our probes to Jupiter and the outer planets will get us plenty of science, hopefully. Okay, good enough. 264 by 206. Alright. Well, let's get over to the same location where we got the science before. Over Africa, I believe. All right, keep above the Earth's tropics, and the biosample reading was in the atmosphere. Okay, but we'll try and land in the tropics. I'm pretty sure I haven't done a goo container there before. I think that'll be an okay location. We'll see. Okay, retrograde, RCS on. And those on the probe are firing as well, which is fine. There's plenty of fuel for that. And ignition of the Agena. Okay, that's good enough. Separation. Insufficient avionics. Well... But why? We had sufficient avionics last time. Oh, maybe uh, when I configured the parachute, I probably had the entire rocket with it. So it reconfigured the parachute to be much heavier than it ought to be. That's probably the problem. Okay, surface negative relative velocity with the RCS thrusters. And we should be all set. Okay, we have entered the upper atmosphere. Let's see if it'll let me select a goo container. Come on, science. Okay, keep. And if we land in the tropics, we'll probably get a new goo too. Uh, a periapsis is there though. We might miss it. Yeah, we'll probably land short and end up in the ocean, but still 20 science. If everything else goes well. All right, looking good. Hardly any ablation happening. We are slowing down. And hopefully we've gotten through the dirt phase of the episode so that when we turn to our interplanetary missions, we won't have similar mistakes. Of course, if I misconfigured something, we that that would have been baked in a long time ago. Okay, getting through the heat, G-forces diminishing, we will land short of our target by a lot. I, I'm not used to retro-burning with an intent to hit Africa, so yeah. I'm pretty sure nobody's uh, used to retro-burning with an intent to hit Southern Africa. Yeah, I don't think that's a thing that has happened very often. Let me just double check that that's armed. Ooh, I might have forgotten to arm that. Thankfully, we do have communications over here. Okay, splashdown. I, we've probably done the goo container over water, but let's just double check. Oh, we, oh okay, wait. We haven't, but it's zero science. I guess, on principle, we'll keep the experiment anyway. Let's recover. 
Okay, well, the game crashed when I tried to recover. Let's uh, recover here. Hopefully that's the right bit. Larry. Okay, uh, I don't know why it's 20,000 data si uh, gathered for the film return camera, but it's only 15 science. Um, yeah, okay. And nothing else to look at. 20 science altogether. We seem to have fulfilled our contract, so that's the important bit. Uh, let's get rid of this suborbital trajectory Agena stage while we're here. And now finally we can turn to the things that I actually want to do, which are the interplanetary missions. Let's take a look at what we've got here for Jupiter Orbiter 2. Oh no! No, this is, this is okay. Uh, this was probably messed up before then. We've got a maneuver here, and Jupiter Orbiter 2 is going to Uranus. Is it something that's actually reaching? I would really like something to actually be reaching somewhere. Mars Sample Return Alpha was the one that we had recently launched. It looks like uh, not so much, not just yet. This one has a mid-course adjustment, so nothing's actually reaching yet. When are these things actually going to get there? It takes forever. Anyway, let's let's get the work done, but it's still going to take some time, it looks like. I was hoping at least one thing would actually reach its destination. With the need to take care of our station crews, it's going to take a while for these things to actually finish their missions. And then along the way, there's still a chance that uh, while trying to complete their missions, their orbits will become all messed up as... It looks like two of the missions that we're trying to deal with today already had done. Okay, well, everything appears nominal here. Um, I hope we have some locked fuel, otherwise we can't finish this transfer. Yes, we do. We have some up here. Um, I'm not too sure where... Okay, that's unlocked. Oh, just this bit is locked. Okay. So we'll take this stage, this stage, and this stage in order to complete this transfer burn. And ignition. Okay. 6,900 meters per second to do. It's going to take a while. Okay, we're now going to go from five asterisk engines to one asterisk engine. And se oh shoot, I forgot uh, five minutes delay on the separation, and I might as well push it one more time for ignition. Okay, let's just leave it there. Okay, I should have built that into the whole maneuver node planning. Hopefully, this maneuver node is not too sensitive. I don't think so. Okay, stage and. Throw up. Oh. There we go. Okay, and we continue. I don't suppose there's any sort of science to be done. While we're here, though, we might as well check. Not range safety. Analyze telemetry. Bad to have those two buttons so close together. Don't know, maybe we haven't done RPWS out here. How about the little ones? We do have the little... Yeah, there we go. Log radiation, record impact data, not seismic data, log temperature. Okay, the science is in, and it looks like uh, magnetometer scan while in space high over the sun. We got 10 signs for that. Let's transmit that. Okay, that's done. Orbital telescope observations we've done before. Telemetry analysis done before. Radio plasma we've scanned, we haven't. That's 18 science. Geiger counter we've done. Micrometeorite detector, temperature. But not atmospheric pressure scan. We haven't done atmospheric pressure scan, so 12 science for that. Okay, and let's come out of time warp. I should have already queued up the separation, but maybe that would have been dodgy. Okay, um, separation and ignition. 
Okay, continuing on. Still seems like we have enough Delta V here without using any of the probes fuel, which is currently locked. Uh oh, uh, I, I forgot we can't just use SAS. That will take some time to activate. Oh, we've got a accidental Saturn enc encounter there, but I think it's more valuable to try and hit this Uranus encounter, though it's in 15 years, though. I don't know. But that Saturn encounter was on the way back in, so it wouldn't have been in a timely fashion, if you will. This engine does throttle. This is a Gemini lander engine. All right, so we'll do this maneuver in two years and 231 days with the intent of entering uh, Uranus SOI and doing a flyby in 15 years. I, I think probably our equivalent of the Voyager probe will get there quicker, but we will see. Getting the boost from Jupiter and everything, but we wanted to make use of this probe, so this will be a backup. Yeah, you can sort of see things beginning to line up. There's Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. You can vaguely see uh, something getting slingshotted from Jupiter to Saturn to Uranus to Neptune right now. But it'll line up even better in the coming years. Okay, so next thing. Phobos Centaur Nico 1344, which is actually going to Venus. All right, so here we are with uh, what has become our Venus mission. Um, we actually haven't done much with Venus, so this will be good. Venus encounter in 60 days if we get this burn right. And plenty of fuel to do so. This is clearly an inclination change. So, we're probably going to have to do another resupply mission for our stations. Fortunately, I'm pretty good with those. It doesn't take too long. And also fortunately, we're dealing with Kerbals, so, and they're on a long-term habitation mission. So we're not going to do too many crew transfers. I don't know why it's not letting me select Venus. Oh, there we go. Once again, I wouldn't be able to activate SAS in time, so we have to make sure Smart ASS doesn't go wandering with the node. Okay, and then we will add a maneuver to make orbit around Venus. And that should be good. Okay, let's add an alarm. Um, maneuver node or SOI change? Maybe we should just go with the SOI change first. Six days, I guess it's the next thing we do. So yeah, let's, we will finally get this mission to Venus even though it was meant for Phobos, but who cares? Let's do this mission. Okay, we are now in Venus SOI. We've got a lot of Delta V actually, and we're sort of aiming for a polar orbit, which is good for science, I suppose. But if we're gonna use this Delta V to go somewhere else, it's not the best way to go. Then again, maybe we'll just stick around. Yeah, but anyway, we can do some science right now. If we haven't done high over Venus science, which we probably have not. So let's uh, toggle that. Log that. And of course, it'll take some time. Um, let's wait for close to Venus to get the goo. We'll do analyze telemetry. You can see, I mean, uh, we've got locked fuel. We've got some extra fuel that we could put to use. Unfortunately, we don't have a parachute. Though, I guess we could use do a thruster landing, but we don't have a heat shield for Venus either. Yeah. As far as total delta V is concerned, it's not, not insubstantial. I suppose we could try and send this probe into, or maybe, maybe we could try and send this thing, which looks the least useful bit, 
but it still has commutrons on it into Venus's atmosphere. And then these two could be separate entities around Venus, different orbiters in different orbits. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. We don't need this maneuver node anymore. We will get a little bit closer on a periapsis so we can do low orbit science soon. Atmosphere of Venus starts at 145 kilometers, so this is fine. Certainly no problems. Let's time warp until we get the science done. Magneto magnetometer sensors are scrambled. Okay, great. How about the rest of the science? How Venus, apparently we've done telemetry before, so we've come this way before. We haven't left anything behind. Nope, no new science high over Venus. Thing is, this little uh, probe body here doesn't have much science, does it? It'd be much more science to plunge this into the atmosphere. All we could do with this is telemetry analysis. Yeah, I guess we are going to have to take the main probe in. Briefly. <laughs> It'll probably be toast, but... For science, we will try it. We'll just barely skim the upper atmosphere. We won't actually bring it down very much. But not right now. Not much of a texture on Venus. Not sure I approve of this cloud cover. Oh, we lost connection. I don't care. We're gonna pretend that I programmed everything ahead of time. Well, I guess we should try and get the probe into a tighter orbit so it survives longer in orbit. So, that stage is done. Um... We'll uh, precep and ignite that bunch. Okay. Well, we don't have connection again, but same situation, different orbit. Nice to have three independent parts. This looks like it can power itself just fine too. Especially when it's in time warp and that goes into low power mode. Okay, and that's all the fuel there. We'll wait until we get connection to separate and extend that probe's antennae. Okay, let's see our situation. So, as far as connection lines go... Well, okay. Uh, it was confusing me. So the the other piece definitely has a direct connection line to home. We are connecting through it to get a line back home, I think. All right, so that's good. That works. I wonder if we're low over Venus right now. Let's do. Let's prep some science. I mean, let me put it this way, uh, I wonder if we're going to be lower Venus when this science actually happens. Alright, I think that's everything, and I've probably done everything twice. Okay, let's make sure the other piece is extending its antennae. Good. Oh, this actually has a 1 kN thruster on it. Let's stage that. Near Venus, but we've already done that one. And that one. Oh, telemetry analysis from just above Venus's Midlands. That's biome dependent. Okay, transmit that back. 22.5 there. Atmospheric pressure, no. And something else, no. Micrometeorite detector. Geiger counter we hadn't done. 30 science uh, just above Venus's Midlands. 
So actually, you know, keeping it in orbit seems like a good deal because there's more science to be done here and we might get some contracts. Maybe let's let's not immediately deorbit this. We'll keep it in mind and we could like do a pass through the atmosphere or just a light pass. Let's unlock its fuels first. We should be able to see how much delta V it has. I mean, I guess we could briefly oh no, don't bother with orientation. Um, from it, well, I guess if it's in time warp, uh, it doesn't have that much power though. Oh, great, right. Uh, RCS will take a while before it will shut down. And we actually don't want it to shut down. Yeah, I'll think about this. We've got a successful mission around Venus. Um, it could provide more science if we just leave it alone because of the telemetry analysis being bound dependent. So maybe we should wait for some contracts with it. I think I'll leave it here. We've got something around another planet. Not the outer planet ones that I was hoping for, but this at least is a salvaged operation that uh, went awry because of a bug. So we can be satisfied with that. On that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.